Hi YouTube, it has been estimated that somewhere between 5 and 300 metric tonnes of space dust and meteorites hit the earth every day. Um, so these range in size from what you're seeing here which are called micro meteorites. Um, these are usually between 0.2 and 0.4 millimetres, so pretty tiny. Um, visible with the naked eye but only just kind of thing. Um, through to larger meteorites, but larger meteorites are really rare in comparison. These things are common uh, in that they are found everywhere and I didn't know this up until the last sort of week or so but these are literally everywhere. I had no idea. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to show you how to go about collecting some if you'd like to have a look for some. So here I have a neodymium magnet. This one's pretty strong, it's got a 500 kilogram pull force and it came in this bit of foam and when I very first pulled it out it's got a carabiner with it and the carabiner was separate and I got the carabiner stuck on one side of my hand and the magnet on the other side so uh, you've got to be careful with magnets that are this big um, but you can see here it's got a rope attached to it so I can swing it around and pick up debris from on the floor and it sucks up things from quite a long way away um, but yeah be careful of your hands so what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to actually put a stronger, you know, tougher bag around it rather than this really thin one because I don't want um, anything to get through to the actual magnet. I like to be able to pull things off of the surface. So what I've done here, I've got really thick um, kind of membrane. This is, you know, you can't really tear this with your bare hands. It's pretty tough stuff. So what I'm going to do is just put the magnet in the middle and then I'm going to kind of and pull all the sides up and then I'm going to attach it all together with some cable ties and I'll show you what that looks like in a second here's some cable ties okay so this is what it ended up looking like I mean it's not as attractive as it was just as a magnet but it's going to do the job and I know the magnet is totally protected now so I just snip off the ends of these cable ties and then I'll be ready to go um, and you can drag this anywhere really so I actually took this to a car park um, where I work at a sort of adult education centre and um, luckily there was nobody around and I just took it for a little walk to see what I could get and I got a whole load of um, debris up that just basically looks like little chunks of um, kind of rusted iron and things mainly but um, when I got home I had a look under the microscope and I managed to find 30 micrometeorites just from a car park. So I've separated all of those out into a little tub and that is quite hard work because they are so tiny um, but I'll show you them here and you'll be able to see the scale so look at this little tiny tub here um, you can see it compared to my fingers and in here are um, over 30 little micrometeorites and yeah they are tiny you might just be able to see little tiny specks there if I put it over here hopefully you can see it against the white yeah so all those little tiny black specks are the micrometeorites that I've managed to separate obviously you've got to be careful because these ping off all over the place and they can be a bit static and things as well so they can kind of jump out of the box and things if you're not careful so I'll just show you what they look like down the microscope so after having looked in this car park, I was only literally in the car park for about half an hour doing my sweeps and managing to get like 30 micrometeorites. After that I went to a very big uh, heathland that's kind of local to me and I took the magnet for a walk over the whole heathland and I was walking for hours and I got back and I hardly had collected any kind of dust at all. And when I looked under the microscope, I was literally only able to find like a couple of micrometeorites. So it just shows they don't land, you know, consistently everywhere. So some people say good places to look for these are in your gutters, because obviously the micrometeorites hit your roof and then they get washed down your roof into your gutters and they can kind of accumulate uh, in little groups in your gutters if you're lucky. So that's one place to look. Um, I think flat car park seems to be a good way to go. Right, this is another um, load of things that I've kind of collected up. Um, the micrometeorites are obvious because they're kind of metallic looking and, you know, they look like little balls or little kind of teardrop shapes. 
But these ones in here are kind of ones that I'm not sure about. They could be or they might not be. Um, so some of these look really quite metallic. Some of them are, you know, very rounded. Obviously they all stick to a magnet. Um, but yeah, some of them are more reddish colour. So these could just be uh, things like iron ore and that kind of thing uh, just from this planet. So anything I'm not sure about, I just put in this separate tub. Um, the ones that I showed you to start with are really obviously micrometeorites. You can't get them confused with things like ball bearings, that kind of thing. You know, little metal steel balls. Because, um, you know, those steel balls are really kind of smooth and perfectly round. With the micrometeorites, you have these kind of flow lines and things on them. And they've got this very obvious texture to them. And, yeah, the ones that are teardrop shaped, that's because... You know, they've come down through the atmosphere at a bit of an angle and they're molten when they come through the atmosphere. And so they kind of drag through the atmosphere and pull. So they form these kind of droplet shapes. I went out today for another look with the magnet. I went to a different bit of heathland and it had been raining and it was really quite wet. And I didn't collect hardly any material at all with the magnet. And I think what it could be it's just that the tiny particles um, get kind of stuck to the ground if they're wet. So I would definitely recommend if you are going to do this, go out on really nice dry sunny days where all the particles can just, you know, flick up to your magnet. It's really nice when you're walking along, you can hear all these like little chunk, 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 chunk noises as all the particles hit your magnet. So although I'm not certain about all of these ones that I'm showing you now, anything that is kind of ball shaped or, you know, really kind of smooth and, and rounded, uh, I'll try and keep anyway, because I might as well, if I'm sorting through my samples, I might as well keep anything that is a possibility. And you never know in the future, it might become more obvious that it's a definite instead. Right, this is another sample. This is kind of typical material that you pick up with the magnet. So I'll show you what this looks like so you know what to expect when you go and use yours. Um, just have a look down here. So this is typically what it looks like, just like a whole load of broken up bits of rusted iron really. And you just scan through this and you know I'm just looking for little anything that looks like a little tiny shiny silvery ball mainly and they do stand out but they are quite tiny and once you've found them they're actually quite hard to um, to then remove and put in a separate tub so I actually miss one at this point if you look um, top left of your screen you can see there's a little shine a little ball shaped thing and I've just gone completely past it um, scanning around like this and I've yeah completely missed that one but um, I think I find it later on just by you just got to keep kind of turning bits over and just looking because they stick to kind of any edge and they could be basically anywhere okay I spotted a couple in this other sample and um, I'll zoom in exactly as I do normally so you can see um, what it looks like from my point of view because you have to keep kind of zooming in and then focusing and trying to find it under the microscope um, so see if you can spot it I'll try and put it towards the center of the screen for you um, this first one is really quite tiny can you see it look for it like a silver ball there you go right in the middle of the screen so it, you tend to see them first as just a kind of a, a little shine there it is Okay, and then the next one in this sample is quite a bit bigger. So I'll show you that one. And then the difficulty is trying to get them out um, without losing them. It can be quite tricky. So this one here, look, you can see it's much more obvious. It's probably three or four times the size of the other one. Okay, and then, yeah, the shine is really quite apparent. And then when I focus, you can see. So some of them appear a lot blacker. Some of them just appear really kind of silvery. Right, let me show you a typical kind of recovery of one of these, trying to remove it to a separate tub. So I've got this tiny pair of like micro um, forceps that are used, you know, surgeons use them. But actually you can't just, you know, try and grab the ball because they're so kind of slippery, they would just ping off somewhere. So what I do is I just try and 
remove them like you can see there that one dropped down so that's not great that happens all the time that sort of thing where they just <laughs> you lose them and then you've got to refine them but luckily this one is just fallen down there so I can see it straight away so what I do is I just um just slightly wet the end of the forceps and then what that means is I can just gradually bring it down touch it on the micrometeorite and it just lifts it up it's like it sort of glues it to the to the forceps and then you can remove it and put it in the tub okay this is the other one that I had to chase around for quite a while before I managed to get it into the tub and then here's another one that's just stuck right on the edge of a bit of metal you can just see it again in the middle here so I find this quite often that they'll be clinging to an edge of something or quite often if you've got something long like a, a sort of nail or something like that they'll be stuck right on the very tip of the nail and that's probably something to do with um, you know when you use a powerful magnet all of the bits of metal that you manage to collect all end up becoming magnetic as well right this is a fragment of one that I spotted you can see the silver shine on it this silver thing that you can see in the foreground by the way that is a staple um, so that gives you an idea of the sense of scale um, yeah that's the staple so I have a little go can you see the the silver uh, looks like a shiny ball but it's not a complete ball it's just a fragment of one so I'm going to try and get that out so here I just kind of try and pull all the other debris away from it so that it's a bit more obvious to get uh, and then I wet the forceps and then just try and uh, get it to cling to the wet forceps it can be very frustrating this like if it doesn't work first time or if you lose it and then you've got to try and find it again it, it's very fiddly and it looks like I'm shaking like crazy here but actually at this kind of scale I'm hardly moving at all okay I'll skip forward to where I managed to actually get it so here look it sticks to the end of the forceps and then I can go and stick it in the other tub okay I know I've got this really nice microscope for looking for these kinds of things um, obviously you can buy much cheaper stereo microscopes or even just a hand lens like this you'll be able to find the micrometeorites I can spot them through a hand lens like this um, it's just the removing bit is a bit fiddlier if you're trying to do it just using a hand lens um, the magnet I know like this is a particularly big powerful magnet this one was on eBay for £44 or best offer. I put in an offer for £30 and managed to get it for £30. So um, I know that's quite a lot, but I'll use it for this and I'll probably also use it for doing a bit of magnet fishing as well. I was just going to show you my tiny forceps as well because these I find really useful for this sort of thing. So these are the ones that are used by surgeons. They're made of titanium and yeah, they're just really micro precision. So I use these like all the time whenever I'm doing anything kind of really delicate. Um, but you don't have to for this. You could just use anything with a really good point. As long as you can kind of wet it um, to be able to lift up the micrometeorites to be able to put them in a different tub, you'll be fine. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, check out my other video on meteorites and tektites. Don't forget to hit subscribe to see anything like this that I post in the future. And good luck if you go out looking for micrometeorites. They are everywhere.